Perhaps some of the fun has gone out of our lives with the disappearance of so many simple activities. Mushrooming, sitting on the veranda, reciting poetry, making your own music, or the enjoyment of silence. In the 19th century, the most colourful fun parlour was called Imagination. The real champions in the game of making one's own entertainment were children. We were allowed to play with the neighbours' children. Uh, we used to have games that we don't hear of so much now. Uh, here comes three... Uh, here comes, comes a Spaniard, Spaniard just from Spain. Spain. It was Called in the form of my daughter song. Jane. Hmm. Yes. My uh, daughter Jane was yet too young to be controlled by such a one. And I say thee well, I'll go away and never come back to you again. Come back, come back, your face is clean and pick the fairest one you see. The fairest one that I can see is Elsie Skinner. Will you come with me? No. I'll give you the keys of heaven to count the angels eleven by eleven. Oh, Elsie, will you come with me? No. I'll give you a golden chair to sit in the garden and take fresh air. Oh, Elsie, will you come with me? Yes. And that's the way it would go, you see, until e everyone had gone to the other side. Uh, mm -hmm. Games like that, we played with the neighbours. Yes. And we loved moonlight nights. We'd go out after tea in the moonlight and the, the stumps would look like crouching lions. It was very eerie. And we'd, get, um, we'd tie camel leaves to our backs and get on the highest stump we dared and flap our hands. And we really thought we went a little further because of it. And there were <laughs> thrills up and down our spine. <laughs> and Mother would call and call, but we were loath to leave the enchanted scene. <laughs> The satisfaction, the sense of purpose, which many of our grandparents gain from their daily work, has not always been replaced by an equal sense of satisfaction from the increased hours of leisure. And I sometimes think that those old pioneers of the eight hours day would be a bit surprised and even disillusioned if they saw the way we used the leisure that they first won for us. But at the same time, we've made tremendous advances. And the very old, and the very young, and in fact everyone, has been liberated from that old prison of hard, continuous work. The prison of hard, continuous work. Even within living memory, most Australians did not escape that prison. They died while they were still working. Today, in contrast, retired people can be seen in the tourist buses, on Queensland's coast in winter, and in hundreds of bowling clubs. They can be seen everywhere. Australia is often called the lucky country. In one sense this is true, but in another sense it isn't. Because so much of what's been achieved in this land is the result not of luck, but of hard, strenuous, physical work. But now, almost everywhere, that hard, physical labour has been abolished. This has been one of the quiet revolutions in the history of mankind. We've seen Australia lead this revolution but it's still taken us completely by surprise. <laughs>